Okay, in this video, I want to explore some of the uncharted terrains around platforms. So what's a platform? Uh, Microsoft Windows, the Mac uh, operating system, uh, Western Union's kind of interconnected uh, money transfer system, uh, even a language uh, is a platform. Facebook is a platform. The Android system is a platform. So what a platform is, is an environment and a set of tools and connecting possibilities that make relationships, design, and building of something possible. So the Android platform allows for thousands and thousands of apps on all kinds of different uh, topics. Anyone can build on that platform. Uh, it comes from the original sense of you know, a foundation, uh, a, a flat space upon which something else can be built with greater ease and fun and all of that. So let's talk about some of the platforms that may not have been built yet, it's hard to say, but that might be worth developing and at least imagining. So one platform is a platform of human excellence. And in this platform, what might be some of the tools that create and allow excellence to be fun. So one of the things that uh, in the portrayal of, of human excellence or human best practices is an easy way to integrate text and video and live presentation. And I would say that the, I would call it a creator's platform because Here's what I kind of want you to imagine. You're telling a story. You're a farmer and you, you have this special way of weaving corn husks into a fence, but it's not just that. You weave corn husks into a fence. You provide screening very rapidly. You do something with the insulation there's a way that you've also enhanced your curb appeal. So it's, it's really you're trying to portray a synergy or an ecology. Now, what's the biggest barrier between that sharing? Sharing is fun. You know, celebrating an idea like I came up with this thing, here it is. It's fun. It's human. We love to give. We love to share. And yet... What are we stuck with? Well, in the current platforms of cameras, of expensive drafting programs, of very you know, slow, time-consuming you know, transmissions of video, you know, even, even uh, this video here, it's this tedious process of put the camera somewhere, look for a light, uh, create a backdrop, then turn off the heating in the house because, uh, you know, it's just one more background noise that doesn't need to be there, uh, give up on turning off the fridge because I might forget to turn it back on again and then my peas and stuff are all soggy the next morning. So there's all these different barriers to share an idea, to share a design. Uh, then there's uploading, then there's, you know, finishing and editing and stuff. And so this is currently a very uh, complicated, slowed down, unintuitive process. So I think one of the most important platforms that can be created is, I'd call it a creative platform. And here's some of the things that might be fun around that. So, uh, first of all, to be able to capture, uh, to 
to be able to capture video and audio to have filters that you can select that do a lot of the editing, like focus in on this voice or uh, create a background against anything other than my body. Um, give me this background. Integrating spatial gestures. Do a line and, and allow me to, anytime I focus this finger, do a line and allow me to, to, to draw and diagram stuff with this finger where on the screen black ink or red ink or stuff will allow, uh, will, will help me to kind of create that. Um, tur turn a drawing 3D. Uh, and so connecting with the hands and being able to tell a story basically in more and more elegant ways. Now, this is currently somewhat limited by technology and a lot limited, you know, with uh, bandwidth and it's yet to come down. But this is a sense of what might be possible in a couple of years as things get faster, smaller, easier, more kinetic. Now, I think one of the most powerful things that a creator platform can do is extrapolate using bot uh, or AI um, so that uh, you can use the self-learning and, and editing uh, partners on a, technologic, on a technological level to create with you. So uh, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, I, I've started creating this little village uh, as part of a kindnessvillage.com project to uh, create a space that is designed to facilitate kindness. And I've got little pieces around that that I'm working with. Um, now, how might this interact with a creator platform? Well, as I upload the values and the ideas, and I have conscious uh, self learning AI, listening, and searching and working with me, the process might go something like this. I do a little sketch. I talk about the values. I reference a book where some quotes of kindness and some storylines of human charity and goodness are outlined in the book. I put it up on the, the kindness, uh, you know, project as uh, to, to partner with a creator app and to share and to collaborate. So what starts to happen here is um, the AI bot first goes out and finds a list of all the books I might want to associate, read, and highlights quotes that have been cross-referenced and highlighted by others and approved because there's a collaboration. So some of these books for some of these values and topics have had these paragraphs be approved amongst all the hundreds of, of uh, paragraphs selected uh, on technical grounds that some of them are also moving. They've gotten validation from people. And so these kind of move up to the top. They're available for me in the space self-created by the bot bigger than I could have imagined. The drawings of little buildings that I've outlined have been cross-referenced with all the different web and Google images for stuff that already exists along that lines in the web. So I can start borrowing the best of different ideas. Uh, the, uh, the, they have also been my drawings have been recreated in different 3D type images by the uh, partner AI uh, while I've been sleeping. And I wake up and I have a village created out of these little drawings. And uh, the village has been created if I find a five acre piece that's more rectangular, if I find a 10 acre piece, if it's uh, more in the Philippines, it might look like this. If it's in Thailand, it might look like this. And so 
there starts to be a sense. Now the bot is also going out and looking at value at real estate prices in different areas. And as I start to interact with the creation, the creation in this case, a kindness village, there is a flow that is ongoing. The more I engage with the tropical plans that the bot created, the more it looks for land prices in tropical places. And it might feed me back uh, the top 20 value. So of all the land on the planet that has some of these characteristics, these are the land prices from all over the world that are the lowest land prices. And it might cross-reference that, knowing my passport, knowing the visa requirements. It, it's, it's interactive. Like the more I engage with the thing, the more it react. It, it interacts. Now, what else might happen? The bot might connect me with other people on the platform who are sharing the same idea. So someone else has typed in kindness as one of the values for a project they're doing for a church. Um, and in sweeping over into that terrain and seeing the scope of their project and what's the, the partner AI has already matched the parts of the project that overlap. Like you might be interested in the land trust agreement of this project over here. You might be interested in the bamboo architecture of this project over here. And so you can skim into these projects, but see highlighted by the AI what might be most of interest to you. And you give it feedback like one to 10, good job, you know, four out of 10, three out of 10. What, it's an interactive learning process so that your partner AI starts to do 80% of the grunt work and your deciding and discerning AI makes the decisions. And in, in that sense, putting us more in the director role. So in this setting of a creator platform, there's another really important thing, which is connecting with people and drawing in teams. And you might have someone who shares a value coming over and you might say that, for example, anyone who has a five-star trust rating, well, what does that mean? It means they don't damage work, they don't impose their work over, they create an alternate version. They're showing courtesy and respect. They meet certain metrics that are interest, interesting to you as a partner they may come in and play with your project and you get to use whatever portion of their idea, of their contribution, of their design that you'd like to embrace and kind of take from this realm of probability into the actual design. You may reciprocate and go over there and say, well, thank you so much. I see, you know, you would have redesigned my whole floor plan like this and this and this and this for this reason. You would have changed my battery pack to this for this reason because you had experience living in this area and they don't sell that kind of battery. And here that it's like, yeah, I approve, I approve. I, I confirm these edits to a creation in progress. Now, what's the implication of this? Uh, first of all, with a creator platform, that is somewhat like the Creative Commons or in public domain type of open source movement where it's for human well-being. Um, the platform may be, that's part of the criteria, it's open source and everyone can help each other. Uh, now, what's, how does this create wealth? Well, one thing it does is it means that there's all kinds of efficiencies that are shared and that are learned by the AIs. And in this way, an entire sector are very rapid. So the learning curve is much faster. And I'll tell you a little story. Uh, I was 10 when we moved from the United States to England. And I was amazed at some of like, first thing I noticed, we lived in a 400-year-old house. And first thing I noticed was the, the, the locks on all the bedroom doors. So they're like big handles, big kind of oval plates, uh, 
solid, you know, big chunks of brass in there. And then there'd be these keys that were about this long and have interesting patterns like castle tops about this tall and stick it in and turn it all the way around. And there was, these keys were clunky. The locks were clunky. Every single thing about it what involved uh, using more and more. Uh... So here are these clunky locks using about 75% more metal than all the locks I'd seen in America, which had 80% more inconvenient keys. I mean, you don't want to even carry one of these in your pocket, let alone three or four of them. And this house was 400 years old. It, these locks may have originated in style 400 years ago when they did not have the foundries to do something smaller. But go to the hardware store to get a new lock and often you'd get one of these. And the question was, why has it taken them, you know, 50 years before they gradually catch up with the U.S. in that department? And on the flip side, there'd be these dual flush toilets I'd see in, in England. And I'd come over to the US and I didn't see any of them for over a decade. And the question is why? And it's just tradition and convenience and the safety of repetition and what's known. But on a creator platform like this, you can benefit immediately and, and the entire world can move up on a growth curve of efficiency uh, as soon as a new technology is proven and tested with confidence because it's vetted by the AI. You don't have to have three or four conversations with architects and trying to call overseas and, you know, they're waking them up at night and, you know, what, uh, what, what's this with these door locks? Do they really work? And having to guess, your AI is doing that. So here's what I predict and see blossoming as a result of this drift of ideas. Uh, one, creating becoming a joy. Two, collaboration and synergy like nothing else we've ever seen before. Three, an 80% increase in constructive sharing of creative ideas and projects because it's more than 500% easier to do it. There might even be a 500% increase in creativity. Uh, and then finally, unusual connections because when you've got the more data and the more projects that are put into the system, the more relationships that the AI can find. For example, there might be someone doing a shell project and the AI isn't focusing on the beauty of the shell collection what they're looking at is analyzing the geometry of the shell and the, the composition and is coming up with a more beautiful and interesting brick design that can be made cheaper, look more beautiful, and uses local materials because it knows where you're being built. Where, and so you get this, this cross-pollinization of knowledge and information. I suggest that once this platform is up and running, uh, once we are exercised in our creativity, it may lead to a very important shift. If you read 90% of the business books out there, they will say something that's very true. It's 90% perspiration 10% inspiration. What this does is it means like, it means that like with Microsoft in the 80s, an inferior product with much better pushing and drive behind it. You know, Bill, Bill and Steve Ballmer incredibly 
uh, assertive and passionate about growing the company. And so you really saw, and we have seen many instances of uh, the quality of design not mattering as much because when you get a couple of passionate and assertive people to push something through, they're going to set the standard by default, by effort. Now, when you get really intelligent partnering AI, you start to see this shifting. You start to see a situation where one person dissociated, no connections, no, you know, doesn't go to parties, doesn't work very hard, does a lot of, um, you know, meditating and off in their own world. So kind of the opposite of that bulldog driving force. That one person who happens to have the most elegant thought, the most beautiful design, and composition, feeding that into the system, that idea can rise to the pinnacle of what's considered excellence by the AI using data-driven metrics. It can then be vetted and confirmed and learned from by human beings. It can be cross-pollinated in anywhere that idea is relevant, it can go into those domains. And we can start seeing a domain or a time in which 95% of it is the quality, the beauty of an idea. And why is this important? Because when AI and technology truly serves and supports beauty and elegance and ideas and co-creates it, we're going to see a 1,000% improvement in the quality of design, in the beauty, in the excellence, in the efficiency of design, and it's not going to cost anything. It's going to save money. Why? Because 85% of the energy spent creating our current clunky designs, whether it's a box house or a box refrigerator or you know, a denim jean shipped over from China, 80% of the energy being spent currently is being spent on inefficiencies. Inefficiencies of transportation, inefficiencies of manufacturing, inefficiencies of design, inefficiencies of distribution. So something gets marked up from a dollar to this, to this, to the other. And when there is an effective partnering with AI, not only do the ideas and the idea quality goes up, but the cost goes down. And I think that's pretty exciting.